you don't have a baby who likes to sleep, you've probably been on Google and mom groups texting your mom friends trying to figure out how to get your baby to sleep. In the worst of my sleep deprivation days, having newborn, I have had some crazy low points where I literally feel like I'm going crazy and I love you and I don't want you to feel that way and that is why I've compiled a list of literally everything I can think of that has helped my baby to sleep or babies that I know of to sleep and I bet there's at least one or two things on here that you haven't thought of and who knows that might just be exactly what your baby needs to fall asleep through the night forever. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Kaylin and you're watching Loves Happy, your favorite corner on YouTube for encouraging, motivational, and helpful content about motherhood and God. Right? So today we're talking babies and sleep. This is like the holy grail, especially with my first when I was new at this. I don't think I talked about anything more than sleep with my mom friends because that is just everything. Just getting sleep so you can function. It's really all about the basic things like sleep when you're a new mom. I have two babies, a toddler and a two month old, and these two children, their sleep habits have been so different, so I feel like I have a broad range of experience between these two. And I also have to say my first one was one of the worst sleepers I ever heard of, at least, okay, just in the beginning stages. Thank goodness it didn't last for a long time, but for at least six months, not just one month, two months, three months, or four months, but at least the first six months, it was rare that I even got a chunk of three hours. It was rare that I even got a chunk of three hours to sleep. So I just have to say, during that first time postpartum, I was so much more sleep deprived than I am now just from getting a little bit more sleep. And now I see how other moms can function more because even if you're getting a slightly larger chunk of sleep, it can make such a difference in you actually functioning. I just don't feel like I'm going as crazy as I did the first time at all. So I just wanna say, I felt like I was that mom who just didn't have it together, but I really was super sleep deprived. And if you're struggling with that, just know some moms just might have it easier than you. And if you feel like you're going crazy and you're the only one, know that you're not and I have been that mom too and it might just be because you're not sleeping a lot and that's totally normal because sleep is so important to actually functioning so I just want to say that having two kids in two different experiences I just want to encourage any new moms out there with that who are struggling with being sleep deprived okay all that being said I'm gonna spew out you 23 different things you can try to get your baby to sleep lots of these things are really basic but I'm gonna mention them too because you just may have not tried them the biggest thing in the beginning and getting them to sleep is emulating the womb because they're so used to being in the womb. So one of the first things that you can do is shushing, is in going like shh to your baby. At first when I heard this, I thought it sounded super condescending, like you're telling your kid to shh, like just be quiet. But no, you're actually emulating the sounds in the womb and it can be really comforting to the baby. An extra tip with this is to match their volume with your shushing and this really makes a big difference. So if they're crying really loud, honestly shush as loud as you can, just shh. Do it like that, and as their volume decreases, match their volume with your shushing. So, shh, gently get quieter. Swaddling, babies like to feel safe and secure, so they're not just like startling themselves awake all the time with every little noise that they hear. Muslin swaddle blankets are great, but I know my daughter kind of grew out of that quickly and we couldn't get a tight swaddle on her with that. And there are so many great sleep sacks that we have tried and loved. So I'll link some of their favorites down below. But I have heard lots of times we don't like to swaddle them because we think we're robbing them of their independence for moving their little arms around. But most babies really respond well to swaddling. So really try to get them nice and tight in there and try some of these other tips together because a lot of these tips work best in combination with some of these other tips. So I guess it's kind of like figuring out your baby's perfect combination of these tips. Get the room dark. We underestimated this so much with our first, but honestly, get yourself some blackout curtains. You can get pretty cheap ones on Amazon, and I'm telling you, this made one of the biggest differences for my first daughter. Nursing. Some babies just want to nurse or want their bottle to go to sleep. And while that may be a bad habit to break later on, that is totally normal, and just give them the boob. An alternative is to try a binky if you've already established breastfeeding, because that can be super helpful and save your nipple from becoming a pacifier. Consistency. Babies like consistency, and you you can set up different sleep cues for them to respond to. So set up a good consistent nighttime routine for them. And I don't mean anything fancy, even just like diaper jammies, song, rocking them in the same spot, putting them down, whatever. Regardless of the different tips that you employ, I would say that consistency is going to help them create good sleep habits for the future. Try diffusing lavender oil in the room, or you can just add a little bit to some almond oil or whatever baby lotion you have and give them a little massage with lavender oil at nighttime. How nice does it sound to be a baby to get rocked 
to sleep, to get snuggled up, to get some warm milk, and a lavender oil massage. That honestly sounds like a dream. Do you ever get envious of your baby? Like so many times I just want to be a baby again. Being a mom, is that not the weirdest thing? But I totally have done it like multiple times before, especially being baby worn. I want to be baby worn because lots of times I'm just tired. Can I just be in the ergo, please? Lettuce. I actually tried this with my first daughter when I was going crazy. I saw this in a mom group I'm a part of on Facebook. You can either put, this is just hilarious, but you can put romaine lettuce leaves in their pajamas or you can put it in their bath and kind of let it meld into the bath waters when you're bathing them. And I believe it's the magnesium in the lettuce that can help them go to sleep. I don't think it worked. I tried it a few times. It totally cracked me up so maybe I just needed that comic relief at least because I was going crazy but maybe it'll work for your baby. Standing up rocking them. A lot of babies, both my babies prefer when you're standing up and bouncing and rocking them or even just walking around your house. It sounds so crazy that they know the difference but both my daughters like to be stood up rocking and like it when you're walking around the house carrying them so try that. Also try baby wearing. Currently my two month old only sleeps being worn or being held so I wear her for as long as three or four hours at a time occasionally because that is just what mom life is. That is the only way I can get things done around the house. That is the only way I can get her to sleep long stretches. If not, she'll just keep waking up, but I can easily lull her back to sleep if she's in the baby carrier. I will link my favorite baby carrier that I love down below for you to check out as well. I know a lot of babies respond well to being worn because they're snuggled up close to you where they like to be and it just makes them feel nice and secure and lots of times they like to be upright too, which brings me into my next tip. Change the positions of your baby or get them upright. When my daughter is fussy, I'm constantly trying to figure out what position she wants to be in. There's only a few that she really likes, but one of the biggest ones that might surprise you is her sitting on my lap and then her leaning forward on my hand. So her kind of just slouched forward with pressure on her tummy. And even when she was newborn, she fell asleep a lot that way. That was one of the positions that she extremely preferred because it was the most comfortable for her stomach because, you know, her little tummy was working itself out in the beginning. So I'd plop her down on my lap, let her lean on my hand, and I would support her face right here as she's leaning forward. And I would pat her back and that's how she'd fall asleep, just like this, sitting forward. And it was just the cutest thing. Another popular position that you can try is having them on their left side and holding them like this. So what you do is you put their head here and then you hold under their leg. No. You put your arm on their tummy and their head here and you grab their bottom this way and you kind of cradle them like this and you can literally... It's just such a secure way to hold your baby. I mean, only do it if you feel secure doing it. But my daughter loves that one as well because just I think the pressure on her stomach, she just is so comfortable in that position and you can just walk around your house like this with her and she will just totally pass out. Try rocking your baby in a glider. Our daughter also loves a glider. Our first daughter did not care for the rocking chair at all. It literally made no difference, but this one can be rocked to sleep like a baby in our glider. Pat them on the back, especially if they're having stomach discomfort or seem like they're squirming or their stomach's tight or they're pulling their knees into their stomach. They might have gas, their tummy might be upset and hurting them and my daughters both struggled with this in the beginning and just patting my daughter on the back whether she's up on my shoulder or sitting down like I described before I pat her pretty firmly and she really likes it because I think it helps with her tummy either get a burp out or kind of just take away some of the discomfort that they're feeling so even if you get them in a good position like that you're rocking them you're shushing them and you're patting their back with lettuce in their pajamas after you gave them a lavender massage it just might work Gripe water or gas drops. My first daughter cried for hours in the evening for the first few months of her life. She was just was super fussy. I think they call it witching hour. My first daughter, I think about three weeks in, she cried for probably five hours one evening and I literally thought, I can't do this. I can't do this. And after thinking she had colic and would be like that for the next couple months, I literally thought, how am I gonna endure Five hours of crying every night for the first few months and oh my goodness, my heart goes out to you. If you have a colicky baby, please message me so I can just love you and encourage you because oh my goodness, I do not know how you did that. Just one day of five hours. I think the next day was a long day too, but then I remembered, hey, we have grape, was not grape, yeah, it was grape water. We have grape water, which did not work with my first daughter at all, but we were so desperate. We gave it to her. Oh my gosh. We just put her in her bouncer and she was just sitting there like totally content, completely different baby. And it doesn't work for every baby, but oh my gosh, it was a dream for the second one and I'm so glad we found it. And we would give it to her whenever she got really fussy and she eventually grew out of that within a week. Thank goodness. And now she doesn't need it at all. So definitely try grape water if they're just extremely colicky. 
as in just like really, really fussy for long periods of time for no apparent reason. Music, lots of babies like to listen to music. Try some lullabies. We have this CD called Christian Lullabies that we randomly found just deserted in our neighborhood. I swear it was like from God for us because it literally has the most soothing lullabies on it. Babies can respond well to music. And not only that, but having the same songs, maybe just the same CD or same playlist that you play for your baby, having that consistency and hearing those same sounds and same tunes can really help trigger them into that sleepy state. My second daughter definitely prefers it to my first. My first daughter could care less and this daughter really likes it. So I just say that because it's really interesting that all babies tend to like something different, yet there is kind of a selection of things that tend to work for babies in general, which are the things that I'm sharing with you. Along with lullabies, singing to them, even if you don't have the perfect voice. I don't have the perfect voice, but I love to sing to my daughter. She really seems to calm down when I sing to her or when my husband sings to her. And I actually have just a lot of fun with it. I totally just make up songs and sing songs to her about who she is and how much God loves her and just really sweet songs like that. And I, it just blesses my heart to sing for her. I don't sing, by the way. Like, I'm not a singer, but I still do it, and it makes me happy, and she likes it. So try singing to your baby. Even though they're new to you and this world is new to them, your voice is a constant for them. It's something that they have heard for a long time since they were in your womb. Vacuuming. My daughter totally passes out when I start vacuuming. When she was little, I'd just hold her in my arm and make sure she was supported. I don't recommend you do this. I have a very lightweight back vacuum and had a good hold on her. I don't recommend doing that. I would definitely recommend wearing them with a carrier, especially if you have a heavier vacuum. I have the best vacuum for this job, by the way. This is probably why I vacuum all the time because my daughter really likes it and it soothes her to sleep. I think it's both the motion and rocking back and forth of vacuuming and obviously that loud white noise as well. And not only that, your house gets clean. You get a little bit of a workout. You get up and moving. It's just a win all around. And before we evacuated, here's my in-laws. Check my life update if you don't know what I'm talking about. That was part of our routine during nap time. I'm realizing I didn't mention a white noise machine. White noise machine all the way. We've had one for both of our daughters and it makes such a big difference. Even just drowning out noises in the other room. Crank it up, not too close to their head. Even if the white noise doesn't help them fall asleep, it can definitely help them stay asleep for longer. Car ride. Some babies hate the car. Some babies love the car. Like my husband. He was one of those babies that would not nap. So his parents would have to put him in the car and drive him around so that he'd fall asleep. My first daughter is like that. My second daughter... She cries, cries, cries in the car seat. I just suggest going on a road with minimal traffic or stoplights because lots of babies tend to wake up when you stop. The way that I justify it is that a few dollars of gas is absolutely worth a solid nap, in my opinion. Another thing which is a great option also for your sanity is a walk in the stroller or baby carrier, which we already mentioned, but so many babies like the fresh air, they like the sights, they like to get outside, and it's just soothing to be outside. It's soothing to be just outside of the energy in your home and breathing in the fresh air, getting some sunlight. And of course, that's gonna be so beneficial to you, especially getting your body moving, getting even just like a measly amount of exercise walking around your block. You gotta start somewhere, so why don't you try taking your baby for a walk in the stroller? This is a big one and your baby just might be overtired and you need to be putting them down earlier. I know my second daughter, this happens to her a lot. She just gets overtired and it's so hard for her to fall asleep. And then when she falls asleep, she actually sleeps for a shorter amount of time. But if she actually has a long nap. She's more sleepy throughout the rest of the day and has longer naps and sleeps better through the night. What I've heard is sleep begets sleep. And again, it sounds counterintuitive. You think you want to tire them out and they'll sleep for a long time. And sometimes that works. But I think that's when they're a little bit older. Make sure they're getting their naps. Make sure you're putting them down soon when you start to see the first signs of them being tired. Maybe it's them complaining. I know my daughter kind of cries and goes meh, meh when she's tired. And I know she's nursed. I know her diaper's clean. She'll yawn and her eyes will kind of, she'll just look tired. Make sure you just try and put them to sleep right then and not overtire them. Try a baby swing. They're not going to work for everyone and I know it can be a sleep crutch. That's a whole nother video about sleep crutches. Actually, I'm probably not equipped to make that video. But what we did is we got a great one on Craigslist. It looked like it was in great condition for a way discounted price, which I recommend because baby stuff is way too expensive and oftentimes they grow out of it so fast too, but try a swings. I know it's not the best to get your baby dependent on different things like that, but sometimes you just gotta do what you gotta do, so maybe a swing will help your baby go and stay asleep better. Okay, and my last tip is just to make sure they're comfortable, make sure they're wearing comfortable clothes, not like scratchy little outfits or things that are too tight on them. Make sure that they're not too warm or not too cold. Make sure that they have socks on if their feet are cold or they have a hat on if their head's cold or if they're sweaty that you take their sweater off, you know, simple things like that. I believe a friend told 
told me that 73 degrees is a good temperature for your house if you have a baby or at least the room that the baby's in. Also make sure obviously they don't have a dirty diaper and they're not hungry, things like that. Make sure their other needs are met. But those are all my tips for you if you're struggling trying to get your baby to sleep. Try these, try them in combination with other ones. If something's working, keep at it. If something's not working, maybe try a few more times and then ditch it and try something else. All in all, remember that this is a phase. I promise you, you will get more sleep. Just hang in there. I know it's so hard. I know you're sleep deprived. I know your house is probably falling behind. I know you probably look like a disaster and can't find a concealer with good enough coverage. Just know that you are going to get through this. Just know that you're doing a great job. I'm proud of you. Being a new mom is so hard. So many times you just don't realize what you're in for. And I hope that some of these things work for you. Make sure you leave your suggestions down below if I missed anything. I think this list is pretty long, but I bet some of you have some great ideas as well. So let us all know down in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you are new and I hope you have a beautiful day. I hope you get a good stretch of sleep tonight. I love you and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.